Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going back to one of my favourite distilleries, the Cotswolds. Now, if you're a fan of the show, you've been watching for a while, you'll know I'm a bit of a fanboy of the Cotswolds. They're producing excellent stuff, but as always, you're only as good as your last album, so another fair review, and we'll see how good this one is. This is the Lord Mayor's Reserve. It's a 46 percenter. It's a little bit expensive at £65, but we'll go into the reasons behind that in just a moment. And I'm going to start this episode, if you like, by saying that I'm not gutted that I bought this bottle, but I bought this bottle about three or four days before they announced their latest bottling, the Sauternes cask, for around about the same sort of price. So I'm a little bit gutted about the timing of when I bought it because my whiskey budget went through the roof that month and I couldn't afford to buy the next one. Hopefully some Sauternes will stick around long enough for me to be able to get hold of some, but we'll see. This got bought a couple of weeks ago and I've had a, a few drams of it, but this was voted for by my patrons. So thank you very much to everyone who voted for that. That's the reason why I'm covering this today. Let's get into it and see what we've got, shall we? Now, one of the interesting things that uh, Cotswolds do fairly regularly is their different choices they're making with their casks. So their standard release is a, a good mixture of their ex-bourbon casks and their STR casks, which I'll talk about in a moment. The Founders Choice, which is my favourite of the brand so far, that's exclusively red wine STR casks. And then, of course, we've got the Peated, which is uh, Laphroaig X Quarter, X Laphroaig Quarter casks. So they're doing interesting things. This one, and I don't normally talk about why things are named such, but it kind of makes sense with this one. The Lord Mayor's Reserve relates to the Lord Mayor of London, not to be confused with the Mayor of London, two different things. The Mayor of London is Greater London, the entirety of London, and the Lord Mayor of the City of London, which this relates to, is the small part, the tiny, tiny centre of London, City of London, Borough. So the cast choices that have gone into this, we've got First Fill, ex-bourbon casks, lovely, we like it, um, we like First Fill. The second part is the STR, the Shaved Toasted Rechard, which is literally as it sounds. They've, they've received old barrels, They've shaved them down, they've warmed them up nice and toasty, and then they've recharred them again. This gives it a kind of basically a brand new crisp flavour, and that's um, American oak red wine casks. And these are the casks that belong to the Lord Mayor. But the, uh, the a portion of the proceeds to this is going to go to the Lord Mayor's Appeal, which helps charities around London. So if that's something you're interested in, that's where the extra of this is going, I think. And the final cask is a single cask, is an XPX cask. All of those were then married together. They say on the website in equal parts, roughly equal parts. So, you know, third, third, third. Uh, that's all been married together. And then for, I think they said another month or so. And then we have this watered down to about 46%. There you go. Natural coloured, non-chill filtered, all things we like. Let's get onto the nose then and see what we've got in the glass. Now for me, it's... Orchard fruits led, it's kind of apples, it's a little bit of pear. There's definitely some maltiness to it, which is something that's quite indicative of the Cotswold flavour profile right now. Obviously a very young distillery. And then there's some back end of these kind of dried fruits and kind of raisins and prunes, things like that, that you would get from a PS cast, but it isn't overpowering, it really is at the back there. It's a nice nose, very fruity, very light. It's the kind of flavour profile of the Cotswolds distillery, this is what they're aiming for. Let's try on the palette then. Okay, interesting. It's very spicy. Very high in the kind of cinnamon spice category. Mixed in with that, you do get a twang of it before the spice kicks in, but you've really got to pay attention to kind of see it. Then when the spice disappears, it's the oranginess. Now these tasting notes, are very similar to what you get off their website, but very rarely do I mirror the tasting notes of a, of a website or of a brand, but these guys have got it spot on. They say Seville oranges on the website. I don't really know what the difference between a Seville orange and a normal orange is, I have to admit, but I'm definitely getting those citrusy orangey flavors to it. In terms of finish, I would categorize it as kind of a medium length, not overly long. Very spice driven. If you wait long enough, you'll get some oranges, some kind of sweetness at the back end of it, but it is very drying on the back end as well. 
not necessarily a bad thing in any stretch of the imagination. I've often said that when I talk about drying, a drying sensation on the finish, really all it does is invite me to take another drink of this dram, which I'm gonna now. Mm. Now, it's a very tasty dram. Personally, I mean, it's not fair at all to stack it up against the rest of the brand. It isn't my favorite of the brand. That still remains with the founder's choice, which is absolutely superb. But I think this sits very nicely next to the standard release as a slight step up with that in uh, interest of the PX cask. And maybe a little bit more years. I don't know how long the, uh, the actual liquid has been in the casks for. You can make some assumptions about how long they've been open for. All I can tell you is the PX cask was aged for three and a half years. That would be the least. The other two probably be a bit longer because it's going to be the standard stock that they make for their kind of normal single malt whiskey mixed in with this PX. That's what we're getting here, that extra. So we'll talk about the price. Uh, £65, obviously for me, I bought that. That's, it's above my usual bracket. I like to kind of keep to about 50 quid if I can. But because it's the Cotswolds and they're my local distillery, one of my favourite distilleries, I just went for it to see if I liked it or not. I definitely do. I think it sits nicely with the standard release. Um, for my money, I would spend the £65 on the founder's choice over this if you were thinking of one or the other. But I imagine if you're a fan of the Cotswolds, you're probably buying the whole range anyway. So it's definitely a welcome addition to it. Nice, interesting changes to it. I am a little bit sad that I don't have the Sauternes cask. Hopefully, if there's still some left when I get paid, I'll get some. We'll see. So you might see a Cotswolds review of that next month. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, for me, absolutely fantastic Cotswolds. But if you're only looking for one bottle of Cotswolds, personally, I recommend the Founders Choice or the Peated if you're into that sort of thing. The part of this is, um, 